Hi, welcome to my latest video. I had a request recently from one of my viewers for details of the bracket that fits underneath here on these rear light guards. Okay, these light guards and the light guards on the front of the car are getting very, very rare now. You just can't get hold of them anywhere. Okay, so this is one reason why I've put an extra security screw into mine there. They are very sought after. I get more requests about making these than anything else. A lot of people are like, can you 3D print me some light guards please? Not that simple unfortunately. These are injection molded. They're far too large to be 3D printed. If I was to 3D print something like this it would have to be made up of various pieces screwed together. It, it would just be a nightmare project. Um, I, 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 actually, I actually do m make and sell the brackets that go underneath here. So if you've bought a pair of light guards for the front and it came without the mounts under here which rivet to the side of the car then I do make and sell those okay these inner brackets here I don't make those I thought about trying to do that but they, they they're visible you see they they need to be the same material as this I've actually araldited my inner brackets to to the main light guard piece so that that just then sort of locates with the two kind of um, dowels into the into the bodywork and then there's a security screw there just to locate that in I might even be changing these to security screws as well at some point these are 12 millimeter long thread m5 machine screws okay now that normally they've got a little hex hex head on them but uh, uh, if you if you feel the need if you've got these and you want to protect them then you might want to switch to security screws like like this one that's got the the torques things with the bit in the middle um, so what about the back of the car well the back is more secure okay because you've got the same uh, 12 millimeter long m5 x screws here which go into metal brackets but the inner screws are hidden you can't get to those when the boot is shut you, you, you certainly can't get at all onto them. There have been some instances recently where the whole rear light cluster has been stolen from a variety of Land Rover models including Freelander 2 because these screws here are you're able to get access to them with the boot closed. Now I did a video on that okay so if you're worried about that and you are you want to see how rear light clusters are being stolen then here is a quick thumbnail of the video I did it got thousands and thousands of views in the first week it was probably my my second highest climbing video in, in, in sort of number of views uh, the first being my modifications video which got something ridiculous like 50,000 views in the first week or two the, the rear light cluster theft video what I did is I actually demonstrated how easy it is to steal these I actually stole my own lights with the boot shut and the car locked and I found out how to do it and I showed you how it's done not to show thieves how to steal it they already know of course but um, really to highlight how easy it is to become the victim of rear light cluster theft if you have these light guards fitted then it does give you a little bit more protection because it kind of fills the gap here between the the light cluster and the boot lid and it makes it more difficult to get something in but i i was still able to uh but somebody might still be able to get something in there a very very thin shafted screwdriver in there um, so what I've done on mine is I've replaced the uh, screws there with security screws and I've put these uh, kind of screw cap things over the top as well. So what I'm going to do in this video is remove these light clusters, remove the brackets, remove the light clusters and have a look at the, the metal bracket there 
I'll take some measurements of that and show those in this video for anybody who's bought light guards and they didn't come with the brackets okay so I'll give you the measurements of that you can make some up yourself out of metal or get somebody to fabricate some okay so I'm going to put the camera on the tripod and get my tools and remove this light guard and light cluster So just to show you the different screws here so that's the machine screw there that came out of there it's 12 millimeter long m5 with a, with a little hex domed head the screws that i use on the other side are stainless steel cross head screws um, i don't know exactly how long they are probably just looking at about 16 millimeters you don't want to go too long with those because they'll start pressing into the inside of the, uh, the light. Now this light cluster has actually got a crack on the lens there. Um, you may change these at some point. Um, I can't go to the later style okay, because the, the lower sort of chrome circle actually goes up that way rather than down that way. So the light guards don't work. So if I'm going to keep using those light guards, I need to stick with this style. But they did do a later model of this type with a clear lens there instead of red for the brake light and the side light. Okay, that's the fog light. We've got um, reverse and indicator. I, I don't know why Land Rover put them that way round. Surely you want the indicator on the corner of the car and the reverse light visible from behind why they would swap them like that if anybody knows please leave a comment below i've often wondered could i swap them back now the bulbs have uh, little pegs sticking out the side of them and, and they you can't just swap the bulbs and swap the connectors over unfortunately um, the wires aren't long enough and then even if you did manage to get the wires long enough the uh, the bulbs don't work so, so it would be a bit of a job to do that but um, but uh, it, I, I think it would actually be better with the, uh, the indicators on the outside. Right, so what I'm going to do now, I'm going to try and bring the camera around and film from this direction here. Okay, so what I need to do is remove these security screws here. So let's find the special security bit on our B and Q socket set. Is it that one? No. Let's 
So should we do that one? Let's have a look. Yeah, T twenty five H. So what does the H stand for? Hard to get hold of, maybe. I don't know. So you can see now how this rear light cluster is just held on by those screws. The other side is just poppered in. So if you can get a screwdriver in and undo these screws, you, you can actually remove the light cluster with the uh, with the boot shut. And uh, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to try and demonstrate that now. Actually, I did cover this in more detail on another video. But let's just close the boot. So let's say I've managed to get a long, thin Phillips screwdriver in here and remove those screws. I can actually then just get the light cluster out. Probably actually takes longer to disconnect the, um, the plug than it does to. Um, actually remove the light cluster. Now a thief would probably just cut this wire and be off. But uh, I have no idea. These connectors, I mean I wish they put something on that said press here or something. Nothing to press. I really hate these plugs they use. They're not impossible. I have no idea what I'm supposed to press on that. Aha! Uh -huh. It looks down that little hole and I can see something moving. Right, I do have to press. Yeah. Come on! There it is, got it. Right. Okay, so you do press that thing there. And then it. The seals come all the drift inside there, actually. Blue seal is all derailed. I have to kind of poke something down in there and get that straightened up. Right, okay, so so there is the light cluster out. Here is the bracket attached with more stainless steel screws. Just before we look at this, I'll just show you what I was talking about with the indicator and reverse bulbs. Okay, so that one on the outside of the car is reverse and that one is indicator the, one. the wires for that I don't think I, ooh, you, you could just about scratch them across but I don't think it will actually locate No, it won't. They've, they've done something here with these kind of weird patterns to stop you putting that in. It won't go in. I think that might actually work if these wires were longer. If these wires were longer, that would... Hang on, can I disconnect the connector? Just to give us a bit more slack. Oh 
Yeah, we're going to be good. Okay. Okay, it hasn't smashed. We're blowing half the bulbs in here, though. And the thing is, the thing's so grimy from all the uh, dirt that's collected underneath the um, underneath the uh, the light guards. Just absolutely filthy. I'll have to get some wipes and try and clean this up. I'm going to check these bulbs now that I've dropped that. I'm going to put in one half the bulbs. This bottom one here is the fog light. Oh, look at this one. It's an LED. LED rear fogs. I think I fitted them. Okay. What's this one? That's, that's the dual filament brake and. I'll have to do a light test. I think the filament might come adrift on that one. I don't know. That's the combined 21 watt for brake, 5 watt for side lights. I will be doing a video soon on LED lights. They're a hot topic at the moment. Um, everybody seems to want to get LED with light bulbs and all that kind of thing. Um, there are a lot of regulations and rules that you have to adhere to with LEDs in general. Only these at the front of the car for a dip beam and not allowed. Unless the car had a pen from the factory with them. The main beam is uh, a bit more relaxed than there are rules, but basically I'll just say what uh, your, your, your lights have to dip with any, any ex extra lights, like the light bar. As long as it's CE marked, it's fine, but it must go out on the dip. To, uh, dip the normal LED. On the back of the car, there are other things to consider. If you put LED uh, indicator bulbs in, like I did try lens, then the, the, the flash rate will go as crazy, the flash is twice as fast, because the current drain is so much less, the, uh, the, the ECU thinks the bulb is blown. Um, I tried LED reverse lights, but they were they were more sort of blue than white. And then with the brake and side light, I found that the difference in brightness was so small, people were, were almost running into the back of me because they couldn't tell when I was putting the brakes on. So, um, so yeah, be very, very careful of fitting LEDs in the other lights. Now, fog lights, they're not can bus, okay, so um, they don't need ballast resistors. Um, and I had completely forgotten I'd left in these LED forks actually. Um, check the other side and see if that's still got one in. I don't really use the rear fogs very much, I mean, thick fog or very, very heavy rain. Um, so, uh, yeah. I'll, have to, um, I'll do a video on LED lights soon, LED bulbs. It is something that I get asked a lot. So, what was I looking here? I was going to see if I could remove this um, socket here. Okay, so now that that's been removed, we've got a bit more slack on the indicator. Let's just see if... Now, I shouldn't really touch these bulbs with piece of hands, but uh, um, I need to show you guys what I'm talking about here. The bulbs only fit in the right bulb holders, okay, so I'm going to clean this off later, but um, that one has offset pegs on the side of it. Okay, so a normal bulb will not fit in this holder here, okay, so just, to, just to show you. That's the reverse one, the pegs are 180 degrees, that will not fit in there. It will only fit in the reverse light one. Okay, so, the, the coloured indicator one only goes there. But will that whole bulb holder fit into there? Or 
what they made that hand did as well. No, that doesn't go in. Just trying to get in there. It's to do with these little sort of there's the there's like a straight plane and two slanted ones. Um, but they are positioned them in such a way that you can't swap them over. Okay. So if you did want to swap your indicators and reverse lights then that's in we've got to get it it only goes in one way so if you did want to swap these over, you'd you'd probably need to keep the bulb holders, swap the wires, and then try to find uh, white and yellow equivalents with the right sort of pin. Um, you can get the yellow with the 180 pins, I think. So if you've got hold of one of these white bulb holders, put that there instead of the yellow, then you sort of it's a lot of work really too much work just to swap the, uh, the reverse and, uh, and the indicator there. There was probably a very good reason why Land Rover put it that way around. So we'll leave it as it is. Right, that's enough about the light cluster. Got that safely out of the way so I'll drop it again. I'll leave my hands up now and then we'll have a look at this bracket. Let's remove that and then we'll take some measurements. So what often happens is when people buy the light card second hand, the front or rear, they come without the vital fittings. Okay, so on the back there's this metal bracket, and on the front there are inboard and outboard brackets. The outer brackets, the outdoor brackets that screw or rivet to the wing, often get left behind because they are riveted to the wing, if you need some of those. Let me know. They're available. Replacement 3D printed versions are available on my website. The inboard brackets depend on the year of your car. There's different ones for facelift and pre facelift. And there's also different ones depending on whether or not you've got the bumper surround fitted. So the bumper surround tends to be fitted on the pre facelift. So there's pre facelift with a bumper surround, pre facelift without the bumper surround and false lift. Okay, so three different types of bracket. I don't make those, so if you buy some white bars and they don't come with those, you're going to have to figure something out. Okay, these brackets are the mounted brackets for the rear. It doesn't matter what year you have, the light clusters will fit the same way. Um, the light bars only really work with the older rear lights with, with the sort of circle at the top, full circle, and then the partial circle lower down. The later type that have the full circle lower, it's just not going to work because the light is going to go across the, the indicators or reverse lights. And then the very, very late sort of LED, very light type ones, uh, I don't think it works for those either. Okay, so, Really, year-wise, you're probably looking up to about 2010, 2011. 
any later than that, I don't think that that's going to work. And that is the point, really, when you start needing to be concerned about your real life. Then. And if nobody really wants to steal the old stuff that's thirty credit cards from the back. Later style lights that have the LED circles on them like that, they can be £500 for a pair of those. Very, very easy to steal and very sought after and I've got an upgrade to those. So um, if you have that style of light in your car, be careful. I would strongly suggest putting a couple of security screws here and even better put the, the screw cap things over the top okay like that so uh, you can get these screw caps from screw fix or most hardware stores and then the uh, screws here i just bought on ebay from it was bolt base or one of those other ebay sellers there's lots of them gwr fastenings bolt base uh, screw city Kane's um, fastening, there's, there's loads of really good sellers out there selling that kind of thing. Powerful UK also do a kit that includes the the screws, the covers, the bit that you need for your, your screwdriver, um, all, all on the kit. I thought about selling that. It's not that point, really. It's, uh, it, it wouldn't be profitable because you can buy the bits really cheap on eBay. So um, if, if any of you want a kit, well, if you want me to start selling a kit, let me know. I'll put a few together, put them on my website. Okay, so let's measure this bracket then. Okay, so what I'm going to do is just measure this and read out the measurements. Now, which way round did this go? Yeah, so it must have gone that way round. Okay, so first things first, distance between these holes. One hundred and 17 millimeters, 117 millimeters. Okay. Okay, 117 millimeters. And I, I don't think the shape of this is is too critical. There, there does need to be. Well, these, these little cutouts here are for the um, for the uh, the pegs on the back of the light cluster okay so the distance from this hole up to that sort of recess there is 15 millimeters and the distance from the lower one down this is from the center of the hole down to the top of the recess there is about 10 millimeters and the recess is the sort of diameter of that is about 20 millimeters so sort of 20 millimeter kind of circular cut out there and the same sort of radius on that one there okay so i've given you the distance from the center of these holes to the edge there i don't know what it is to the center of that hole i'm not sure okay so well, it's going to be it's going to be about 10 and then if that's a 20 millimeter diameter then it's going to be 10 there so there's going to be 20 millimeters from the center of that hole to the center of that 20 millimeter diameter hole and this one here is going to be 25 millimeters okay distance down to these bracket bits sticking out Okay, so to the top of this bracket here is from the center of the <coughs> the center of the hole down to the top of the bracket is 
is 19 millimeters and to the bottom of this bracket is 39 millimeters okay so 19 down to there 39 down to there the distance out on this one is about 15 millimeters make it yeah about 15 millimeters before it starts to roll around that sort of curve this one here is exactly the same okay so 19 millimeters down to this top edge and 39 down to that bottom edge the width of these bits sticking out is 20 millimeters both of them exactly the same okay so you now know the distance here the distance and the size of these cutouts the distance down to each of these points here this sort of uh, piece here I think is purely for reinforcement okay it's not it just it just allows this to kind of hang down here okay I'll measure that piece there that is 48 millimeters 48 millimeters there and that comes in down to there and that's 20 width of this here I mean it's a bit of an odd shape at the top here we've got about 18 about, yeah probably 19 millimeters 19 millimeters and then it gets slowly wider and wider as it goes down when we get down to there it's about 25 millimeters okay so it's about 22 millimeters there okay so that's a bit of a sort of irregular shape it's just sort of slopes in slopes sort of gets wider there and then slowly gets wider still as it goes down these steps down here we've got 25 millimeters and the same yeah actually that one there's slightly higher that is no that's that's about 27 millimeters okay so this distance here 27 and that one's 25 well yeah 20 is 25 from this deck to that deck uh, and that one is probably about 28 actually 28 millimeters from there up to there these bits here sticking out you've got 20 millimeters and 20 millimeters okay there does seem to be a very slight curve on this these two are sort of not parallel okay so they are pointing slightly away from each other so 20 and 20 and then these bits here are 18 and 18 to the edge here to these threaded holes okay so these are threaded we are talking 10 okay so it's 10 millimeters to that from that edge there to this hole okay Hopefully that is all the measurements that you'd need to make something like this up. Okay, now it's starting to rain now. There is a heavy shower coming over. So I'm going to have to reassemble this. Let's just take some overall measurements down. This back piece here is 150 millimeters and the overall length there is 175 that there is five millimeters from there to there
that's it. I can't think of any other measurements that I've not, not given there. So you should have everything you need now to make one of those up. The other side, of course, is the other way around. I'm not going to remove that and measure that. It'll be the same size, but just with everything reversed left and right. It's made of steel. It looks like one millimeter thick steel. Okay, and there are threaded inserts here for the these holes here. These holes are plain. Those are like threaded M5. And yeah, they're probably about three three millimeters uh, thick in total, deep thread. Right, I'm going to put this all back together now. I hope that was useful. I'll see you in the next video. Thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you. Bye.